This is Road Noise, episode number 24. We're going to talk about a simple yet effective way for you to save money. I'm going to tell you about my week and the new purchase that my wife and I made. And then I'm going to tell you about a brand new podcast that I've found for writers. Might be something you're very interested in. So that's all coming up on episode number 24 of Road Noise, life one mile at a time. Welcome back to another episode of Road Noise, or if this is your first time, welcome to an episode of Road Noise, Life One Mile at a Time. I'm your host, Michael Blackston, and if you are hearing the sound of something under my voice, what you're hearing is the sound of the road, hence the reason we call the show Road Noise. And you're sitting in the passenger side with me as I commute from place to place as I travel all over the southeast doing what I do. This is one of those episodes that I am getting a second chance at because I'm having to record it for the second time. I recorded this several hours ago, and then I started doing the post-production, and I noticed that there was something weird, and when I listened back to it, the levels didn't even look right, and when I listened back to it, there was an awful lot of road noise, more than normal, and there was this really bad whine as well underneath my voice and I toyed with whether or not just to let it go and to maybe record a short thing at the beginning that said just ignore the wine but you know what I wouldn't want to listen to something like that neither do you okay you can forgive me for the noise of the road under my voice I've cleverly figured out a way to make that acceptable for this podcast but other than that a whine like that it would have just needled into your ear and pierced your brain and you would have hated me forever and ever and so I decided I'm gonna scrap that episode we're gonna redo it gonna figure out what went wrong and I did figure out what went wrong I won't go into all of the gory details because it's just technical mumbo-jumbo but I did figure out what was going on and I fixed it and then I did a test and everything's good this episode is going to be at least the main topic all about saving money and how I figured out a way that you can save money by doing this technique that I do really easily and effectively and it won't just save you money but it will also help you out in other different ways like maybe even your health or just some of the bad spending habits that you might have gotten into several years ago I had a friend of mine tell me about this technique and I ignored it for a while and then a couple of years ago I decided to try it and now that I picked it up it really works for me what is it it's as simple as this I don't spend one dollar bills or loose change I don't spend it the only time I break out one dollar bills or change to spend is when I'm in a situation where I have no other choice like I need to make exact change or I'm leaving a tip for a waitress or something and normally I'll leave at least a five anyway but sometimes for various and assorted reasons I might leave three or four dollars those are the only times I don't spend any more one dollar bills and loose change pennies quarters nickels dimes they all get saved and because I travel all the time I have different compartments in my automobile that hold the different change. My silver change, the quarters and nickels and uh, dimes go in one compartment, my pennies go in a separate compartment, and my dollar bills go in another compartment. And what I do is with the dollar bills, I'll wait until I've got 20 of them, and then I'll paper clip them together, and then that goes into a, a pouch that I keep in my car. And the same thing with the change when I've got enough pennies for a roll or two I'll roll them maybe in my hotel room gives me something to do in my hotel room Uh, same thing with my quarters and nickels and dimes and when they I get a roll it goes into that same pouch with the other ones and at the end of the week I go to the bank and I deposit it simple right it's a practice that took me a while to get into because at first I hated the thought of putting them up it was almost like I was throwing the money out the window even though I kept telling myself time after time I'm not throwing money out the window it's still my money I still have access to it if I need it 
It's just out of sight, out of mind. And it really has revolutionized the way that I handle money. Because if you think of it this way, when you've got ones and change in your pocket, most people, to some degree, think of those denominations as extra. That's just a little extra pocket change, a little extra folding money. Something that I keep with me if I want to buy a cola or a candy bar or a pack of potato chips. You got that little money and you don't have to break a 20 or a, or a 10 for it. The problem with that is when we have that available always in our pockets and not put away, we tend to buy those things whether we need them or not. I mean, frankly, how often do you need a cola? How often do you need a candy bar or a sack of potato chips? Never. You know, health-wise, you'd never need those things. Those are all things that you want, and it's fine to buy them. But what I've noticed is that now that I've decided I'm not spending my ones and I'm not spending my change, I don't buy them as much. I don't like the idea of breaking a 10 or a 20 for something as menial as a cola or a candy bar. So it's really kind of a double whammy of fortune for me. I'm saving money, and on top of that, I'm not buying the unhealthy crap that I would normally buy just because I've got a little loose change in my pocket. It's harder to make yourself break a larger denomination of money than it is a dollar bill. And I find that it's amazing how much money you can save, how much those dollars and loose change will accrue in the space of a week or a month. It might just blow your mind when you realize how much waste, wasteful spending you're doing. You've heard the term nickel and diming yourself to death. This takes that out of the equation and it helps you to save money so it's something that I suggest you give a try because, listen, I lived paycheck to paycheck for the longest time. Lived. I said lived, but I realized that I probably dropped the hard D there at the end. So I lived paycheck to paycheck for the longest time, for most of the two decades that I've been married. It's only been recently that I've been able to say I'm not necessarily living paycheck to paycheck. So I know what it's like to not feel like I have anything. By saving this money, I have realized I have money left over now. Just from that. I mean, this was before, back when I, I started doing this a couple of years ago, and I was still living paycheck to paycheck. And even with the company that I've been running for almost 10 years, times were tight because my wife wasn't working. Every cent that I made had to go towards supporting the family and there was very, very little left. Now that she's working, that's what has caused us not to have to uh, live paycheck to paycheck because she decided to go back to work and before then she was a stay-at-home mom. But most Americans live like that. There are very few of us who have disposable income and a lot of times we like to think of those ones and change that we've got loose in our pocket as what we use to kind of enjoy ourselves and have a little fun and that's fine if you want to do that but if you're looking for a way to save money and you're saying I just can't seem to put that extra twenty dollars a month or twenty dollars a week up for say a college fund or something you're planning on this is a good way to do it Again, you will be amazed at how much you're spending and don't realize it unless you're just one of those frugal people who takes note of every little cent that you spend. And if you're that type of person, you probably don't need this advice. But if you're the kind of person who lives paycheck to paycheck and you always seem to have too much month at the end of your money and don't know what to do or where it's going to come from, this is a benefit. It's a way to help you solve that problem. And so I hope you'll consider it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of advantages to doing this that 
you can kind of up the ante on. For instance, I'm thinking about now starting to quit spending fives. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen yet or that it will go on for very long because I'm not that crazy fortunate at this point financially to where, you know, I can start up in the ante of the denominations that I hold back. But budgets don't come easy to me or my wife. We try to make them and we try to stick by them. Yes, we know that's important and again, we try. But it doesn't always work out and this is an extra way. There have been several times that this money that I have put up that I've decided not to spend the ones in the change has paid a bill that we didn't realize was coming and didn't know that we were if we were going to be able to pay and I could say well I've got it in the bank my ones and change I'm able to do it and and we were able to get out of a jam that way so if you are fortunate enough even knock it up to fives you'll save that much more money again I don't know that that's going to happen very long when and if it happens with me but it's something I'm thinking about You also want to think about keeping it out of sight. Now, I first of all, I don't have any of this in sight in my car. It's all tucked away. If someone breaks into my car for another reason and finds it, so be it. But it's not going to be the reason that somebody breaks into my car. So if you're keeping a stash like that, be very careful and make sure that it is not seen. Um, another thing that you might consider as well is making sure that if you're doing the ones that you keep them in stacks of 20 and then put that away in denominations of 20 instead of having a big roll. The first time I did this, when I first started, I would just keep it and see how thick I could make the roll. And then I found out that is one of the things that law officers look at when they pull you over. If they see a big wad of money like that, they'll search your car sometimes because you kind of look like some sort of a dealer of something because they tend to keep big rolls of money. Now, when they find out it's ones, it's probably going to be able to be explained, but it's just a lot easier to explain if you've got it all organized and tell them what you're doing. Just something to think about. Also, when you whip out a big uh, wad of ones uh, in front of somebody and have to use it, you know what the first thing they're going to ask you is, oh, going to any strip clubs lately? So, you know, keep that in mind. But no, the main reason is you don't want to get broken into, so you want to make sure that any money that you have is tucked away so that you know where it is and you know that it's there, but nobody on the outside looking in is going to be tempted to get into your car for that. I have had someone break into my car, broke the window for 75 cents, three quarters that I had accidentally left in sight, and they broke the window to get it. This is also a good technique for someone who tends to be a hoarder, now, I'm not a hoarder, but I enjoy collecting. There's a part of my brain that enjoys gathering numbers. When I walk, one of the reasons I like to walk is because I can see how many miles I can get. It's a challenge. This is a good way to do that if you have that mindset as well. And something I mentioned earlier, it's also a good technique to use if you have a goal that you'd like to reach or a purchase you'd like to make. If it's something that you say, uh, for instance, I have a couple of different microphones that I want to buy. I want to buy a headset with a boom mic, almost like a broadcaster's mic to wear when I do this podcast so that I don't have to hold the microphone in my hand like I'm doing now while I'm driving. I've got complete control of my car, but my arm does get tired. And if you notice a couple of times, I've noticed that if my arm starts to drift downward a little bit and the positioning of the microphone changes, the sound of my voice or the amplification of my voice might change. It might get a little bit lighter and then I'll realize it and get the microphone back into position and suddenly it's louder again. Well, when I do the post-production on these shows, I'm not going to go and, you know, I, I, I do a leveler so that it tries to make everything as level as possible, but I'm not going to go through and, and hit the amplification in all those places. It's just too, too time consuming to do that especially when you can hear it. But I don't want you to have to keep turning the radio back and forth, the volume on your radio back and forth, or uh, your phone, however you're listening to this podcast. I want it to be nice and even. So I'm thinking about getting one of those headsets with a boom mic, and then I'm wanting to get a lapel mic for the video blogging that I'm doing and some of the videos I'm getting ready to create. This money is going to help me with that. 
It's where that's coming from. As I save my ones and change, that's one of the purchases I'm planning to make with that. Also, that pays for this podcast. The $20 a month that I spend for hosting on this podcast is paid for in the ones and the change that I use and deposit into my bank at the end of every week. So it's something to think about. It's something I think that you will find beneficial if you decide that you want to go ahead and do it. So there you go. It's a simple way to save money if you decide that you want uh, or have the need to do some money-saving activities. There's a good way to do it, and it'll give you some uh, good stuff to go along with it, uh, maybe helping out with some of the bad habits you've gotten into. I've had an interesting week. Since the last time I recorded a podcast, I believe I was on my way to Sumter, South Carolina. Maybe. Maybe not. I can't remember what I was doing or where I was going. I haven't listened back to it recently enough. But anyway, last week I went to Sumter, South Carolina. And I had mentioned to my wife before I left that maybe we ought to think about buying a bigger automobile for her to carry around our children. To be her automobile. And she's the one that drives our children around and she's been driving a Hyundai Elantra which is a great car but it's a smaller car and I just like the idea of my children being safer and she had mentioned wanting more room anyway so I said maybe it's time to think about it because my Buick has 185,000 miles on it it's coming up on 2,000 miles and while it does work well it still drives well little things are starting to happen like the other day the uh, cigarette lighter uh, thing that you plug your phone charger into. I don't smoke, so the actual lighter's in the glove compartment somewhere, but the thing you plug your cigarette lighter outlet, you plug your charger into and stuff, that stopped working. On both of the cigarette lighters, I have one for the passenger or for the back seat and one up here in the uh, in the console. It stopped working, and I figured out that it was just a blown fuse, and I was able to change that out, but little things like that are starting to go wrong with the Buick. And so I said, I travel hours and hours away from home every single week. Sooner or later, it's probably going to happen that I'm on one of these hours away road trips and the Buick is going to break down on me in some form or another. And I'm not going to be able to drive it and I'm going to be having to put it in a shop there outside of my normal mechanic. I'm going to have to rent a car. I'm going to have to go to a whole lot of trouble when I could just park it and use it for my around town operations and it can be a great automobile as a third automobile in an emergency but but one that I travel around town in because it's still got plenty of miles on it. It runs well. Well, last week I was in the Buick and I was headed to Sumter, and I was in Sumter. I had finished my work and was getting ready to go to Walterboro, South Carolina. And I think I may have just noticed one of those things where my arm went to a different area and I readjusted the microphone. So if the audio gets a little bit lighter and then gets back to normal again, that's what happened. Anyway, I was headed to Walterboro, South Carolina, but I went into one of the Goodwill stores there in Sumter, South Carolina to look for CDs to uh, prop up my... Broadway CD soundtrack collection and I was looking for a couple of other things. I look now at the thrift stores and Goodwill stores where I go at the clothing and try to find pieces that would be good costume pieces for our local high school drama department. Their funding isn't what it needs to be and they need costumes and so I've decided that's going to be one of my charitable donations uh, as someone who is experienced in theater when I set my eye on something in one of those thrift stores that would be a good piece for costuming, then I'll pick it up for them and donate it. So that's what I was there doing, and I had just gotten off the phone with my wife five minutes earlier telling her that we were going to go ahead with this decision about me driving the Hyundai, parking the Buick, and getting her something else. Just got off the phone with her five minutes earlier from that, and I said, we'll do that Saturday. When I'm home, we'll go take care of it and get you into a new automobile. I got out into my car, shifted from park to reverse. The Buick wouldn't move. I mean, the shift would not go out of park. The shifter lever moved. In fact, it moved 
more freely than it ever had. There was no hitch in it as it changed gears. In other words, it was just completely free moving. And that wasn't right. And it would not go out of park. It was, it was just one of those things that tends to happen in life. You talk about it, you know it's coming, and you make the plan, and it doesn't allow. It gets you right there at the edge of your plan working, but no, life's going to interfere, and you're not going to be allowed to make the next move in your life without having to go through this little valley. Luckily, we had already made this decision and made these plans, so it didn't upset me as bad as it probably would have if we had not had these plans and then I thought well great now I'm gonna have to do this so it really wasn't as bad a situation for me I laughed it off I walked to uh, McDonald's and got on the phone to the people that I had just finished the work for because the in-laws of the son uh, of the monument company the in-laws run a auto parts or and not an auto parts but an auto mechanic establishment I didn't know that at the time. I just called him and told him, hey, I'm still in Sumter. This has happened. Can you recommend a good mechanic? And he said, yeah, I can. It's my in-laws. So they took care of me. But it took a couple of days or a day and a half to get it up and running again. So I was going to have to rent a car, which I did, drove to Walterboro. So when this happened, I told my wife, I said, you might as well go ahead, find what you want. And she found something she wants. She found uh, a good deal and found a dealership that was really ready to go and and we were able to take care of it and she got a Mazda something I have no idea what it's called I don't do cars and she's told me 20 times what it was and I didn't look at the paperwork I you know I trust my wife she's smarter with numbers than I am uh, she took care of it it was her credit and she did it anyway so I just said okay go ahead and uh, it's a Mazda something it's a sporty minivan it's not a normal size minivan it's a little smaller but it's very sporty it's roomy rides really well and as I record this I'm in a brand new automobile to me uh, it was used when we purchased it but it had low miles on it and now it's got over 100,000 miles on it but it is in better shape than the Buick and I'm driving the Hyundai Elantra it'll be interesting to find out if there's a change to the noise under my voice because I am noticing that I'm hearing a wind gust against the windshield in this one that I did not hear with the Buick. So hopefully it won't change. When I had the problem with the audio earlier, I, I, I couldn't tell anything, it was just awful. But I did a test run and when I listened and, and did all the post-production on this 10 second test run of audio that I did to see how it was gonna compare, it sounded really good. So hopefully it won't be enough of a change that you will even notice it, but you know, it's it's there and we'll see how that happens but I'm in the Hyundai and that's what's been kind of consuming me for the past few days this is Tuesday evening right now it's 8 13 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, I'm not too far from Atlanta I'm between Augusta Georgia and Atlanta Georgia on Interstate 20 West and the Sun just went down and everybody's kind of moving along at a good clip now traffic has slowed and that's good I stopped to eat supper at uh, I believe I, yeah it was a Thompson Georgia which is normally the exit I take when I'm coming from Augusta to go home and I'll just go through the back roads and go home from there but I kept on at the interstate after I ate ate at Long John Silver's got 1200 words written on my novelization of Mr. Long Said Nothing so I'm feeling good I'm feeling accomplished I just really feel good right now and uh, mm, I'm joyful I'm joyful. Had some temptations yesterday, and I felt them coming. I've told you before that uh, I battle an addiction to pornography. I have been winning those battles, and it has been great, but there are times when the temptations are stronger than others. There are times when it'll hit, and I'll just push it away, as a good little Christian should do. But then there are other times where I can feel it coming on in a powerful way and everything I see, every billboard has a woman without many clothes on it. Uh, just something like that that will just trigger those temptations within me. And I could feel it yesterday morning really heavily. And I want to say thank you. I'm not going to call their names, but I want to say thank you if any of you ever listen. 
I have two friends of mine who are accountability partners. One of them is my always go-to accountability partner. Uh, you can hear more detail about him in, if you go and listen all the way back to episode one, A Healthy Lifestyle. I, uh, in the spiritual area of that podcast, I gave a little bit more background about my, my number one go-to accountability partner. But I've got a new guy that's in my life who understands me and is a prayer warrior, a great godly man of God who's not afraid to speak it. And I, I messaged him as well as my accountability partner. And I asked both of them to pray for me. I said, you know what? I need some prayer. I need some strength today. You know why. And I just covet your prayers. And they both responded immediately telling me they were praying right now. And that response, just knowing I had a couple of my brothers in Christ praying for me, right then, right there, it wiped that temptation away. I wept on the way to work yesterday morning just thanking God for His goodness and putting people into my life that I can trust and count on to not judge me, but to understand and to love me right where I am and to pray for me right then and there. I hope you have somebody like that in your life. It is just fantastic when you've got really good, true friends like that in your life. And I'm happy. It was a battle that was one that could have easily been lost from the temptation I was feeling yesterday morning. But it was one because I trusted God and the people He had put in front of me to help me out in those situations. God knows what He's doing. God knows what He's doing, and I just love Him so much. And I, I hope you, if you don't now, learn to know God the way that I do. And the last thing I want to talk about is this new to me podcast that I've found if you're a writer and obviously if you've listened to this podcast enough you know that I am there is a podcast called the right now podcast with Sarah Werner I came upon this podcast actually several months ago and I listened to the first two or three episodes I even sent her some feedback complimentary feedback and she replied to me immediately and was very appreciative of it and I told her I was going to be listening, but then life happened, and somehow it dropped through the cracks, and I basically forgot about it. One of the things that happened is I had to change my podcast player because something funky happened with the with the application on uh, both my iPad and my Android, and it all got messed up, and I dropped everything. Had to re-download or re-subscribe. I'm sorry to the podcasts I like to listen to, and that was one that I just forgot to do until recently, and I was looking for some writing podcasts, and I came upon it in the search, and I said, oh yeah, there's the Right Now podcast with Sarah Werner. I forgot about that. Let me see what she's up to, if she's still podcasting, and she is, and if you are a writer, this is a podcast that I highly suggest because she meets you where you are. She's not a, an author who has published 20 New York times best-selling books. She's not somebody that you come across on a podcast that's speaking to you and has the knowledge because she uh, is on some higher authorship plane than you. She is me and you. Is that the correct? I'm talking about this and I'm going to tell her to listen. I sure don't want her to think this guy really has no grasp of the English language and he calls himself an author. She's just like me and you she loves to write. It's her passion. And she's passionate about helping inspire other writers to get up off their butt and write. That's why it's called Write Now. W-R-I-T-E Now. The Write Now Podcast with Sarah Werner. And I would say probably the easiest way to get to that podcast is through her website, which is www.sarahwerner.com. And I'll spell her name for you. It's S-A-R-A-H-W-E-R-N-E-R.com. SarahWerner.com. And if you'll go there, her podcast... <laughs> her podcast... It sounds like one of those old mountain guys. <laughs> no... Sorry, my comedian in me came through there. <laughs> Her podcast is right there at the website, and any other information that you'd like to get, you can uh, get right there at sarahwerner.com. Plus, you can contact her, and I highly suggest you do. Uh, you can go to iTunes and leave her a review. If you do leave a review, um, or if you contact her at least, let her know you heard about her podcast on the Road Noise podcast with Michael Blackston. I'd love 
to just let her know that uh, that you did hear it and that you're following her through this podcast. It just helps us to network and stuff like that. I'll be contacting Sarah here shortly in the next few days before this is released to let her know when it's released and where she can find it and uh, listen to this very nice, positive review because Sarah Werner's The Right Now podcast at www.sarahwerner.com is this week's positive review. If you'd like to get in touch with me, guess what? I have a brand new phone number. I've been talking about it, and although I still don't have the greeting up there yet, I do have the phone number, and uh, here it is. It's 706-408-7456. That's 706-408-7456. You can call that number and leave a message for me if you would like to get some uh, contact going with me via email, uh, via voicemail. If you do... Uh, just uh, say what, whatever you got to say, and I'll probably end up putting it on the podcast unless you tell me you don't want me to. So make sure if you don't want me to put your voice on the podcast, you tell me you don't want me to. But otherwise, you may end up on the podcast, and you can say, hey, that's me. That's me when you're listening to the podcast. Other ways to get in touch with me are, of course, my email address is feedback at michaelblackston.com. That's feedback at michaelblackston.com, and you can... Also, contact me and leave comments on my webpage at www.michaelblackston.com. And when you go to the michaelblackston.com page, right now it consists of mostly my blog. Um, well, right now it consists of all my blog. I've, I've, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with the Road Noise podcast. Right now it goes to the old page. I do have a page set up on Libsyn, which is the carrier I use to host the podcast. I have a page set up there to go ahead and start making that. I'm going to transfer that over probably to where when you type in roadnoisepodcast.com, it goes there. But just in case I decide to put it at michaelblackston.com, which I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm going to do. uh, Either way, just type in roadnoisepodcast.com and you'll, you'll get somewhere. That's got my information on it. So contact me, please. And if you would be so kind as to go to iTunes and leave me a rating, a review, uh, and be honest. I'm not asking you for a good review. I want you to be honest about it. But any review helps to get noticed and helps more people to find me on iTunes, which is the number one way. But I'm also available on TuneIn Radio and... Stitcher and all those places that you can find podcasts. You can probably find me there. So, until next time, until the next episode, thank you so much for spending your time with me, riding along with me on this commute in the passenger seat, listening to the road noise under my voice as we learn to live life one mile at a time. I'm Michael Blackston. Thanks for listening.